Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello dear students, today in this module we are going to discuss about mouthwash, gargle and throat paint and I am Dr. Mona Semalti from HNB Garhwal University, Srinagar Garhwal. I welcome you all and let's see in this module what we are going to discuss. We are going to discuss mouthwash, gargle and throat paint and after going through from this module you are going to learn about mouthwash ingredients of mouthwash gargle throat paint and its formulation aspect so dear student now let me tell you about mouthwash mouthwash mouth rinse oral rinse or mouth bath is a liquid which is held in the mouth passively or swill around the mouth by contraction of the perioral muscles and or the moment of the head and may be gargled okay uh, they can be used as a cosmetic for controlling the bad breath through the use of antimicrobial agents and flavors okay they can also be used as a therapeutic agents to reduce the plague, gingivitis, dental caries and stomatitis. Now component directly moving to the component of mouthwash. Antibacterial agents, alcohol, humectants, surfactant, flavoring agent, fluorides, coloring agent and sweetening agents. These are the component of mouthwash. Now taking one by one then antibacterial agent, cetyl, Peridinium chloride CPC it is used in mouthwashes in concentration uh, from 0. Point, uh, up to 0.5 percent chlorhexidine okay and uh, triclosan saline and other antibacterial agents such as cinnamon oil and uh, cassia clove eucalyptus thyme, peppermint, anise, menthol, thymol and methyl salicylates. So these are antibacterial agents used for mouthwash. The next important component of mouthwash is humectant, glycerin and sorbitol. Because whenever we talk about humectant, glycerin and sorbitols are the only two compounds which comes immediately in our mind that glycerin 5 to 20 percent uh, in 5 to 20 percent concentrations are added in the mouthwash and this agent increases the viscosity of the preparation and it enhances the sweetness of the product next is alcohol basically mouthwash is uh, alcoholic preparation having alcohol ranging from 10 to 20 percent concentration and it enhance the flavor provides the sharpness to the taste okay and uh, uh, unpleasant uh, taste of active drug can be masked by using uh, this ingredient and it also function as a solubilizing agents and as a preservative surfactant Okay, they add in solubilization of flavors and in the removal of debris by providing foaming ac action if it is needed. Polyoxomer 4, 407 and 338, polysorbate 80 and, and they are used in as a 
surfactant in mouthwash flavoring agent okay fine flavoring agents are used to uh, to contribute in the taste of mouthwash uh, and xylitol sorbitols are used in this coloring agents are used to this products for providing the desirable color and distinguishing similar products in eyes of customer okay the most common color is blue green okay this uh, you might have seen mouth washes uh, if sometimes then you might have noticed that only main two colors blue and green are the only colors which are used and uh, are certified by uh, food drug and control uh, by fdc fluorides sweetening agents and preservative fluoride phosphate ion triclosan chlorhexidine and hydrogen peroxide sweetening agent saccharin is added and preservative you can take examples of parabens sodium benzoate now moving to the preparation of mouthwash uh, mouthwash preparation the very first step is the formula setup that how you are going to prepare mouthwash the very first step is formula setup and the second step is to ensure its stability okay so it is carried out for ensuring that the product is going to remain uh, stable with intact quality regardless of external conditions for a long term storage and then production of uh, mouthwash to large scale and then filling of the product in appropriate packing so moving to the very first step this is compounding so compounding mouthwash is prepared via batch process in a and area of the manufacturing plant called compounding where the mouthwash is going to be prepared here the operations referred to as compounders okay the persons who are operating in this sections are referred as compounders batches around 2000 to 3000 gallons are prepared using the specific formula setup and instructions for the mouthwash preparation the raw materials are delivered to the compounding area okay this is the first thing and uh, uh, then compounders add them to the main batch where they are thoroughly mixed two materials are used in large quantities in mouthwash water and alcohol okay so these are pumped directly to the tank to the formulation tank you can say or the container uh, which is done by simply setting the it is automated process a uh, computerized machines uh, just do uh, this uh, to supply the appropriate amount of uh, appropriate amount of water alcohol to the main uh, container or main tank uh, which is uh, used for the formulation of mouthwash then the mixing uh, speed and temperature uh, everything is uh, automated and it is completely controlled and uh, the batch is also controlled by the uh, computer machine and uh, the time which is taken to complete a batch it depends upon the size of the batch and the number of number of components we are going to add into it so next is batch analysis so what we do in batch analysis once the batch is complete the sample is taken to the quality control lab okay the batch is checked whether uh, it meets the official uh, specifications uh, standard uh, specifications uh, as per the formula or not then the quality control chemist is going to run the viscosity ph determinations and other related parameters if any characteristics of the batch is found to be out of range then it is corrected okay it is corrected at that spot only at that time only 
say for example the color variation problem can uh, it can be modified by uh, the modification in in the use of coloring matter so this way if any if anything goes wrong with the batch so it can be sorted out at that time only so that is why the instant uh, jo hai immediate quality control tests are performed okay after approval of the batch uh, it is pumped from the main tank to the holding tank and then from holding tank to uh, is directly hooked up to the filling lines where the product is to be packed of is to be filled individually okay next is filling okay at the beginning of the filling there is a large bin called hopper uh, which contains the empty bottle uh, that is to be filled right here the bottles are physically manipulated so that they come out standing upright on the conveyor belt so then they are removed for filling uh, uh, then they are removed to filling corrosel that contains the bulk of mouthwash product then the filling corrosel has a series of piston filling heads that are designed to deliver an exact amount of mouthwash to the individual container okay after the bottles they are sent to the conveyor belt for uh, then after the bottles they are set to be fi are filled completely and uh, then they are uh, sent to conveyor belt to capping machine the caps are also held in a large bin okay and correctly aligned as the bottle pass through the capping section the caps are put on either twisted or pushed in the place depending on the type of the uh, cap which is used so after the process of capping the bottles are sent to the labeling machine the labels are held in the large spools and threaded through a machine as the bottle passes one by one the labels are stick to them either by adhesives or by application of heat so this way we have come to the labeling from the preparation okay from the raw material then we discuss the what are the raw materials which are used how it is going to be formulated what are the things and uh, what is the process and then final mixing quality control and then filling capping and then labeling so after the labeling the bottles are moved to boxing a station they are typically gathered in a group of 12 to 24 and dropped into a box okay the boxes are then moved to the palleting machine and stacked high speed production of this uh, production line can give us 20000 bottles of mouthwash per hour okay go through from this formula of uh, sodium chloride mouthwash we have ingredients sodium bicarbonate sodium chloride okay chloroform peppermint oil and water so this is a formula just for your reference so dear students just remember this formula is a exam it, it you can write in the examination as a exam example procedure dissolve sodium bicarbonate and sodium uh, chloride in 10 ml then add chloroform peppermint oil make up the volume and then dispense the solution so this is the preparation of sodium chloride mouthwash moving to next topic in this module gargle okay these are aqueous and hydro alcoholic solutions which are used uh, which are used and uh, uh, to treat or to prevent the throat 
infection so they are dispersed in concentrated form and are used with dilute uh, uh, with dilution with warm water okay so they are brought in intimate contact with the mucous membrane of the throat and it is allowed to remain for a few moments example potassium chloride and phenol gargle so this is the example uh, you just have a look at the formula potassium chloride 30 grams and uh, patent blue v 0.009 gram liquefied phenol and water up to 1000 ml so this is a formula of potassium chloride and phenol gargle bpc there is an another formula of uh, uh, phenol gargle uh, phenol glycerin and uh, amaranth solution and water up to 100 ml so this is another formula Okay, look at the procedure. Amaranth solution plus small quantity of hydrogen peroxide plus phenol and glycerin to aid the solution is stirred and made up of the volume with the purified water. Then diluted with equal volumes of warm water. Okay. Okay, here I am giving you an another example of a herbal gargle which is prepared by using ginger. So, uh, simmer. What you have to do first is simmer one tablespoon, that is fifteen ml, grated fresh organic ginger root or powder in a cup of warm water for 10 minutes right then uh, strain the liquid and add a tablespoon again 15 ml of honey or pinch of cayenne pepper right then what you have to do this is used as a gargle every 30 minutes until the throat feels good right so this is ginger gargle for throat infection now moving to uh, the next topic in this module uh, which is throat pains so uh, these are solutions or dispersions of one or more active ingredients intended for application to the mucosa of the throat or mouth right so paints can be applied on the skin and mucous membrane but all paints cannot be used on mucosal membrane so throat paint should be made viscous so that they are going to adhere to the target side for longer duration of action so throat paints this is one important characteristics of throat paints that they are thick enough in consistency so that they are going to adhere to the target side for a longer period of time okay the viscous property to the throat paint is provided by the addition of glycerin okay which acts as a vehicle also so so we can say that the throat paints are viscous are are viscous enough preparations and uh, glycerin is used as a vehicle in that okay and it contains one or two active ingredient in a suitable vehicle okay glycerin we have taken as one of the example so they are applied to the affected part with the help of camel hair brush or by cotton plug right or with or without dilution with water now medicaments which are used in throat paint astringent antiseptics anti infectives uh, and analgesics okay
Okay, now astringents, you can take example of tannic acid, boric acid, antiseptic iodine, crystal violet, anti-infective like phenol, analgesic, 6 okay, clove oil, potassium, permagnet, these are the examples and these are, this is the list of medicaments which are used in throat paint. Now let us uh, see the some of the advantages of using throat paint for the treatment of pharyngitis, laryngitis, tonsils, thrush and ulcerative stomatitis. Okay. Now the higher viscosity of throat paints. It as I told you in previous slides also that the higher viscosity of throat paint is uh, going to allow them to adhere on the targeted surface for a longer duration of action okay so this is one of the advantage of throat pain that they have got the higher viscosity so that it is going to adhere to the target site for a longer period of time and uh, so overall uh, the bioavailability which we are we are going to get is more due to this advantage of throat paint now uh, disadvantage of using throat paint the application of throat paint it results in increased in salivation hence the person has to spit it off often okay so this uh, sometimes makes the patient uncomfortable so it's not easy to apply throat paint on the inner part of the mouth and throat by fingers so camel hair brush or the cotton plug twisted at the tip of the plas uh, plastic stick. So the, by this way, one has to apply the throat paint to the inner part of the mouth. So this is one of the disadvantage of using the throat paint. First thing, it increases the salivation. Hence, the person has to spit it again and again. So this is sometimes uncomfortable for the patient. And another thing is it's difficult to apply throat pain with the finger to the inner part of the mouth now look at this formula uh, preparation of compound ip throat paint uh, it contains potassium iodide okay iodine alcohol purified water peppermint oil and glycerin okay so you have to remember this formula because you are going to write it in your examination if throat paint is asked and you have to mention this example. So just remember it contains potassium iodide, iodine, alcohol, okay, purified water, peppermint oil and glycerin. So look at the procedure. Preparation of compound IP throat paint. Okay, iodine is slightly, it is slightly soluble in water, but the presence of potassium iodide, uh, iodide, it is soluble and forms polyiodides. Okay, so the solubility of this polyiodide is higher in water as compared to the iodine. And alcohol, it acts as a co-solvent to increase the solubility of iodine. So, as glycerin is viscous, is na uh, viscous in nature and throat paint will remain adhered to the throat for a longer duration of action. So, what is the contribution of each ingredient? It must be clear to you that what for uh, the each ingredient which is there in the formula is used. Okay, now alcohol it is used as a co-solvent and glycerin is going to contribute in the viscosity. Okay, so... Now, what you have to do next is treasurate the iodine in glass mortar to get the fine powder and accordingly weigh the required amount of iodine. Okay, now dissolve potassium iodide in water and then to this solution add iodine powder by continuous stirring. Dissolve peppermint oil and half of the portion of uh, dissolve peppermint oil and half of the portion of the portion of glycerin in alcohol so this uh, this is the procedure for preparation of compound ip throat paint now to complete it what you have to do next is add this solution to the above iodine and potassium 
iodine solution with continuous stirring and adjust the final volume with the remaining portion of glycerin okay as the preparation contains the volatile ingredients like iodine water and peppermint oil and also the iodine which is very sensitive to the light so the paint is stored in amber color bottle or plastic screw cap okay so and the camel uh, paint brush is also supplied with the product for its administration or for its application in the inner part of the mouth so you can take another example of tannic acid throat paint tannic acid sodium citrate dried sodium sulfide and glycerin so uh, how it is going to uh, be prepared what you have to do weigh separately tannic acid dried sodium sulfide and sodium citrate you have to triturate them to fine powder in a porcelain dish then to this powder you have to add the glycerin and again treat it until you get a smooth mixture right and then the remaining amount of glycerin is added to it and it is mixed well in the next step what you have to do is uh, this mixture is heated on a sand bath between 115 to 120 degrees centigrade with occasional stirring okay until you get a a solution form and then you have to cool it to the room temperature this preparation is capped in amber colored bottle to prevent the uh, uh, any interaction with the light and to prevent the evaporation and uh, of the solution and uh, you have to uh, screw it with the plastic screw cap and then labeling it polishing is done so that's all for this formulation and these are the references uh, you can refer this for further reading so dear students now let me quickly summarize this module that we have studied about my mouthwash a gargle and throat paints the active ingredients uh, which are used in mouthwash gargle and throat paint and other additives which are used Uh, their formulation details so all these things we discuss uh, about mouthwash gargle and throat paint in this module so dear students i hope you have enjoyed this module so stay tuned for more videos and thank you so much for watching this video